is the fact correct that he received seven hundred and fifty six dollars that, that is correct then that's correct he worked eighty three hours in addition making a total of one hundred and twenty three hours and for those eighty three hours he received double time not double double time uh, at the rate of seven dollars uh, per hour that doesn't check out what we have here we have here that he worked forty hours at straight time that he worked forty three hours at double time and 20 hours on double double time or golden time is that right or wrong how did you get that car it's an it, it's an error i'm sure senator bricker well, in this situation does not prevail throughout the atomic energy commission uh contracts or their work it certainly does not this is a very unusual situation and one that developed just prior to test we originally set a schedule for the fall operations of October 1st for the first shot. We started construction in June of 1951. We started, which is very unusual for us, anywhere in the program on a 54-hour work week because the time was short. And we had to have the control post ready for the 51 fall shot. I am here at my own request to deny unqualifiedly various statements about me which were made before this committee by one Whitaker Chambers day before yesterday. I appreciate the committees having promptly granted my request. I welcome the opportunity to answer to the best of my ability any inquiries the members of this committee may wish to ask me. I am not and never have been a member of the Communist Party. I do not and never have adhered to the tenets of the Communist Party. The statements about me made by Mr. Chambers are complete fabrications. I think my record in the government service speaks for itself. Belong to any of the organizations that the Attorney General's office has listed? No, I have not, Mr. Chairman, and I so stated in my opening remarks. Has your wife ever belonged to any of those organizations? She has not, Mr. Chairman, to the best of my knowledge, and I think I would not. I think you would. Has she, she never been a communist? Uh, she has not. Again, I must say, under oath to the best of my knowledge, I think my knowledge is better than Mr. Chambers' on that. Especially about your wife, I would say that's correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, if you were in charge of an executive agency, would you employ a communist as a chairman, if you knew it? That is what President Roosevelt used to call an iffy question. Yeah. I want to congratulate the witness that he didn't, he didn't refuse to answer any questions on the ground that it might incriminate him, and it didn't bring a lawyer here to tell him what to say. The charges made by Miss Bentley are false and fantastic. I can only conclude that she is a neurotic liar. I am not and have been a loyal, I am and have been a loyal American citizen and was a faithful government employee. Mr. Silvermaster, uh, would you kindly turn around and Mr. Bentley, would you please stand? Do you know Elizabeth T. Bentley, who is standing? I refuse to answer this question on the grounds that any answer I may give may be self-incriminating. Now, you realize, Mr. Silver Master, that Mrs. Bentley has made very serious charges against you before this committee. You refuse to state whether you even know her. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. I refuse to answer this question on the grounds that any answer I may give to this question may be self-incriminating. Do you know Solomon Adler? I refuse to answer this question on the same grounds that any answer I may give to this question is not incriminating. Do you know Alger Hiss? I refuse to answer this question on the grounds that any answer I may give this question may be self-incriminating. Do you know Frank V. Coe, C-O-E? I refuse to answer this question on the grounds that any answer I may give this question may be self-incriminating.
I would like to inform the members of this committee that I have been taking testimony in executive sessions for several months in the past. And I have, it has been testified to me on the highest authority, by the highest authority, that two shipments of uranium oxide, one of the fundamentals of the atomic bomb, were made to Russia from a, an obscure airfield in the western part of the nation in 1943.